Father Francis with you on this fifth Sunday in Easter. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, amen. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm up here in this beautiful uh, backdrop of Lake Tahoe. That's Lake Tahoe right out there, folks. And uh, probably do a little pan around here and kind of show you this little uh, state park here. It is an absolutely beautiful spring day. In fact, it's today is May 4th. May 4th. And I hope you'll forgive me for what I'm about to say. May the 4th be with you. So all you Star Wars fans out there, may the 4th be with you. Okay. Got that out of my system. We can go on now. So there's a really curious statement in John's Gospel today. Jesus tells Philip that the disciples, that he and the disciples know the way of the Lord. Uh, again, the, the disciples are wanting to know, if you will, kind of the inside secret into the life of faith. I mean, you know, sometimes we, we kind of think that the disciples, although we recognize from 2020 hindsight that they really didn't have a clue to who Jesus really was. Uh, they struggled with trying to, you know, really understand him. And sometimes we might be tempted to think, well, if I was, had only been physically close to him, I, I think I, I, it would have helped me to my spirit, in my spiritual life. You know, I'd be able to be a better disciple. I'd be able to, to follow Jesus, uh, you know, in a better way. And I think that's a, that's, a, that's a good desire of our hearts to have, that we long to follow Jesus. And the thing is that he, he does teach us the way. Now, again, this, this uh, whole idea when Philip says, you know, you know, Lord, just, just show us the Father and that'll be enough for us. Like, you know, give us something, you know, something that we can, we can hold on to, something we can, you know, sink our theological teeth into so that we can know that what we're doing is, is the right way. You know, that, that's not a bad question. You know, you look around and there are so many different uh, different theologies, let me just say it that way, different theologies about Jesus. Now, some of those theologies are heretical and erroneous, okay? But a lot of them, I think they kind of, it's sort of like the, uh, what I, I, use, I use this analogy a lot. It's sort of like when the World Book Encyclopedia or the Encyclopedia Britannica, when it came to human anatomy, some of you will remember this, they had these little films and little sheets. They were clear through and, and there were overlays. And so they would have a basic skeletal structure and then they would put like the musculature system over it. Then they put the nervous system over it. Then they put the organs over it. And then they'd put, you know, the, the, the whatever, the skin or the flesh over it. And, and so you would, you know, kind of build up layer by layer what, uh, what the human anatomy was all about. And in some ways, uh, different theologies uh, actually can have that kind of an effect. It can give us a, a maybe a broader overview perspective of what the life of faith is. Uh, I was listening to a video, in fact, today um, about uh, the path <coughs> to holiness, because this is what the path that Jesus is talking about. He's talking about, you know, when Philip says, you know, Lord, you know, just show us the Father, that'll be enough. And Jesus says, Philip, you know the way. And every time I used to hear that for many years until just recently, and say in the last th three or four years, uh, after preaching that gospel in homilies for funerals, it finally dawned on me what Jesus was talking about. And maybe some of you know what he's talking about, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But again, he calls us to, to journey along a way, the pathway of holiness. And there are like several components to this path of holiness. The first one is yeah, you have to, you know, acknowledge your sinfulness. Uh, the second thing is that um, you shouldn't really be focusing uh, undue amount of time and energy on other people's sins. You know, you should try to be practicing, you know, uh, kindness and, and, and Christian charity. Uh, another one is you need to be humble. Okay. Uh, you need to be humble. You need to be honest with yourself if you're going to follow the path of holiness. So let me just kind of go back and just kind of look at um, 
some of those uh, components in just a little bit more detail. Um, when it talks about, you know, acknowledging that, you know, it is a sin. You, you have sin in your life. I'm afraid to say that there are a lot of people today who kind of fall into different camps. There are some who just outright reject the fact that, yes, they are sinners. Uh, I have met several, especially young people, who have no concept of what it means to be sin, sinful. Uh, they just kind of just, it doesn't, it doesn't register with them. I don't know if they're broken inside, if they're just being recalcitrant and stubborn hearted, um, or they have a calloused heart, but they just kind of, you know, they just don't accept the fact that they've done things wrong in their life. You know, you can kind of maybe, you know, eke it out of them a little bit and say, come on now, you know, you never told a lie or you never, you know, back talked to your parents or you never stole anything or you never, you know, looked at somebody with lust or, you know, you've never cheated or something like that on a test. You know, nine times out of 10, they'll finally begrudgingly say, well, yeah, but I don't think that's a sin or, you know, whatever. And so there, there, there are people that just flat out deny the reality of sin in the world and in their lives. And then the other, other category is that there are other people who will kind of admit that, yes, they have a weakness. You know, they have, you know, um, a fault. They'll, they'll, they'll come out and say, yeah, I, I have a, a weakness. But God understands. God understands. And the problem with that is, is that, you know, you don't acknowledge it as, yes, it is a sin. And we are called to, you know, repent of our sins and turn away from our sins and uh, so that we can have true metanoia. Okay, and if you're not willing to, if you're willing to give yourself an excuse, well, it's a weakness. You know, uh, I have a bad weakness when it comes to cussing, or I have a bad weakness when it comes to, you know, drinking, or you know, I have a bad weakness when it comes to my diet. You know, well, yeah, that's that's partially true, but the other part of it is it's a sin, and you need to acknowledge that and face it. Uh, the second component about, you know, not judging others. Now, this is very tricky because, again, the scriptures judge all of us. And so, you know, sometimes when we might be tempted to, not maybe tempted, but we maybe somebody, you know, does something that's clearly wrong. And we have to point it out, especially if they even come to us and they say, well, did, what I did was that, was that wrong? You know? Um, you know, sometimes I have uh, married couples, they'll come to me and they'll say, oh, by the way, uh, um, I was married once before in the Catholic Church and now I'm remarried, but I didn't get an annulment the first time. Is that bad or is that wrong? If I, if I told them, oh, it's okay, I'd be lying. You know, uh, sometimes couples will come and they'll say, hey, you know, uh, we practice uh, artificial birth control. Is that wrong? You know, again, a lot of priests don't want to be the bad guy, you know, but you have to tell people the truth. And so, you know, if somebody comes or maybe it's a young couple and say, well, you know, me and my girlfriend or me and my boyfriend, we're sleeping around, you know, we don't, we know it's not right, but at the same time, we're going to get married in six months, so it's okay, right? No, you have to encourage people to do the right and forego the sin, okay, to turn away from sin, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a 180, you know, you're going this way, in one way, and then all of a sudden, God, through his grace, and he says, now you're going in a completely different new direction. People want to go in the new direction, but sometimes they don't feel like they have enough strength to do it on their own. And that's why the, that's where the grace of God comes in. Uh, the second, uh, the third component, I guess, is, you know, just, you know, uh, being, you know, again, now we overdo this and we make it, the, we exclude everything else to this one thing. And that is, you know, practice kindness and charity. Well, we're all called to do that, okay? Um, and so that's, that's, that's something that, that kind of helps us to get out of ourselves. And uh, again, it's a good thing. You know, again, you know, it's, it's, it's modeling ourselves after the, the compassionate life of Jesus, okay? Um, you know, and again, I'll say this. When, you know, even when you're kind of, when I'm a little stingy, I'll just put it this way. When I'm a little stingy of heart, say, oh, no, you don't want to help that person. I don't want to give them anything or, you know, they're just, they're just manipulating me or whatever, the church. Uh, sometimes, you know, I, I find that maybe I was a little quick to judge them. And guess what? You know, when I do step out of my comfort zone to help them, a true need, uh, I have to be honest. If I, if I know, and again, to be very frank with you, uh, people sometimes take advantage of priests. Um, 
you know, they know, oh, I can ask Father for some money for gas or I can ask him for this. And, you know, have, have people taken advantage? Yeah. Uh, but the people that I've really been able to help and I know that I've helped them. And nine times out of 10, I don't even, they don't even know I'm helping them. I'm just, somebody says, hey, by the way, that person over there, you know, they could use a little, you know, whatever it is, uh, help on something. And I'm able to do that without them even knowing about it. It's awesome. It's awesome. So again, I get, I get probably more of a blessing by doing it <coughs> than, than they do by receiving it. And then I guess the last component is just being humble. Just being humble. You know, that doesn't mean that you false humility, like I'm no good, I have no talents or whatever. It just simply means that I am dependent, solely dependent, totally dependent, wholly dependent upon the grace of God in my life. So I want to finish with this one uh, part of this gospel. Um, Philip, again, he longs to follow Jesus. And he says, okay, Jesus, just show us the Father and that'll be enough. And what's interesting is his desire is to follow Jesus completely, wholeheartedly. And two things that I think are very fascinating. One, he's already doing it. He's already doing it. What do I mean by that? Well, it's sort of like the nose on your face. I can't see the nose on my face. I know it's there, but it's there. I just don't see it. And in many ways, when we are following, especially when we have that desire like Philip and the other disciples to do, we are actually on the path with Jesus following him. What do I mean by that? Where was Jesus going? This is where I always thought this was a pretty good insight. And I think it's theologically, I think I'm on sound, sound ground here. When Jesus says, you know, when Philip says, show us the way, you know, show us. And then Jesus says, Philip, you, you know the way. And the way is what? It's the way of the cross. You know, ta-da, it's the way of the cross. Because that's, you know, we talk about the way of the cross, you know, the stations of the cross that we celebrate uh, primarily, you know, in Holy, in, in, in Holy Lent, in Great Lent. But, uh, but the thing is that the stations, again, are, uh, if you will, they're, they're kind of like the, the life of Jesus encapsulated. Again, it's following his example. Um, and we do that. Sometimes we don't, we're not even aware that we're doing that. Uh, again, when we look at the stations of the cross, we look at, you know, again, Jesus, you know, accepting, you know, the, 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 the cross in his life. Jesus, you know, uh, carrying that cross, you know, step by step, day by day, sometimes falling down, but yet getting back up, uh, carrying that cross and still encouraging other people, uh, carrying that cross and still you know, um, uh, allowing God to still work um, through him, even in those horrible suffering times. And, and so, you know, again, that's the way. See, Jesus, you know, he does show us the way. Sometimes, you know, you read that. And I remember I'm reading that for, for months and months, years and years and years, and realizing, well, what is the way? What does that mean? And then you look at the context of, uh, that's one of the things that I've kind of learned in you know, biblical exegesis is, well, look at the context that Jesus says things in. And, and he's on his way to Jerusalem. He's on the path to the passion. He's on his way of the cross. And so are the disciples with him. Now, does that mean that they're perfectly following the way? Of course not. Does that mean that we perfectly follow the way? No, of course not. But we know the way. See, that's the thing. We do know. God has revealed that to us. So what we have to do is we have to kind of then maybe like here I am in, you know, uh, South Lake Tahoe. Um, I live on the other side. <laughs> I live over there. <laughs> I live over there on the West Shore. Uh, but, uh, or actually, you know, maybe over there, I guess, you know. Uh, yeah, that's, there you go. Um, but the thing is that um, you have to know your place on the ground. Uh, you have to know where, where, you're, where you are. And uh, so, yeah, maybe, maybe you have fallen. Maybe you're all bruised and bloody, you know, and you feel like, what's the point? Maybe you're filled with discouragement. I know a lot of people are, again, weary and kind of discouraged. You know, the churches are still closed at the time of this recording. You know, please, God, you know, we'll get a little message saying the churches can be open this Sunday. Um, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? You know, this might be my, hopefully my last, well, the, the next video I make will be the mass video for 
uh, Easter Sunday, fifth Sunday. I'm hoping that will be the, the last one I have to make for the actual mass. I'll still make these homilies uh, from time to time as, as, I, as I am want to do. But again, knowing your place on the way of the cross. And uh, sometimes, you know, maybe we're uh, being ministered to like Jesus was by Veronica. And sometimes maybe we're ministering to others as Jesus did to the women of Jerusalem. Uh, again, there are different uh, stations of, of the cross, the path of the way of the cross. And sometimes we just need to identify where we're at. Okay. So today, you know, the whole message is getting and staying on the path, staying on the way. And again, the wonder, the wonderful message today is, you know, Jesus has revealed what that way is for all of us, for Philip and the early disciples and for you and for me, it is the way of the cross. May Almighty God bless you today, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.